insightful presentation from Mr. Curtis Tram, the Regional Sales Director of Engel Manufacturing, who will be sharing his views with us on global trends in pet food market. Mr. Curtis is a graduate of Missouri Western State University, holding Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. He has been with Wenger for 27 years and has served in various roles. He holds product patents and works closely with industry leaders, implementing process solutions for commercial extrusion applications in the companion animal and aquatic feed industries. His current role in, in, at Wenger oversees sales of process equipment. In doing so, he works closely with clients and vendor sales engineers, defining projects from concept to commercialization. He has had the opportunity of visiting many countries in some about 41 countries, developing commercial solutions and personal friendships. Mr. Curtis, the stage is all yours. Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Indian pet uh, industry for this opportunity to present today. And uh, what I plan to share with you are the trends and innovations in the area of uh, dry pet food and treat processing. Uh, innovations that we feel will really help uh, broaden the uh, flexibility in their process and the products uh, they may want to produce. Here we're going to look at the elevation of, uh, or the evolution rather, of dry pet food processing. Um, in the uh, in the beginning, if we roll the clock back nearly a uh, hundred years, uh, you can see it was a really simple process, uh, whereby the uh, pellet was produced and then presented uh, to uh, the animal. As technology and formulations continue to develop and grow, and the need for more specialized uh, formulations were required. Um, uh, the uh, first continuous cooking extrusion process was developed in the single screw extruder in 1958. Again, as the need for products began to grow, and the developed, uh, development and quality uh, became more important, and the range of recipes and uh, types of ingredients grew, there was a need for further advanced um, uh, processing, and the twin screw was developed in the 1980s. This really broadened uh, the application range and the ability to manipulate the process and produce more products. Uh, built on that technology, uh, over time in 2009, uh, came the thermal twin screw extruder, which was really a game changer um, in terms of uh, the ability to uh, manipulate the process uh, from high mechanical energy inputs to uh, high thermal energy uh, inputs. Uh, again, further uh, manipulating the process um, and again, being able to uh, produce more unique and uh, different products. Um, built uh, off the thermal twin technology uh, and uh, in this latest innovation in 2020 was called the uh, thermal screw technology. Again, further uh, developing the ability to enhance uh, thermal energy input and one in which uh, involves a, a little different mode of operation. Uh, to, to allow that to happen. So again, broadening the application range and the ability to uh, manipulate the process provided a more flexible process and uh, one that would allow greater range of products uh, to be produced. So that leads to product differentiation, um, the ability to change the format, uh, the recipe, uh, from say economy style uh, products all the way up to high high meat style products. Many times um, that will lead to a product that carries a little bit more value uh, in the market or at a little bit higher price point, thus uh, the ability to generate more revenue uh, for the business. And also to have that uh, 
uh, have a process that can hit all those quality uh, parameters that are required, uh, whether that is food safety or nutritional related uh, parameters, which are important for protecting your brand. Next, uh, I think it's important that uh, as manufacturers, uh, that we are uh, in tune with the, uh, the direction of the market and so before we jump into the technology, um, let's take a look here at uh, Euro monitor numbers um, up through 2023 on compound uh, uh, annual growth rate of dry dog food, which you'll notice that the uh, the premium segment of this uh, category continues to be the leading uh, segment and that's really driving this, this uh, category of the industry. So having a, a process system that can allow you to play in this area is important. In addition, uh, cat food, both uh, mid-priced premium and the treats uh, segment continue to drive uh, this area of the market. Um, again, having uh, the ability to have a process that's flexible enough to uh, produce that range of foods and treats on a single platform uh, improves your, uh, your ability to produce those products that can be innovative and impactful to the business. What's next? Uh, what are the trends that we hear and see uh, uh, from our clients and what uh, are these trends that continue to be strong and growing. Uh, it's uh, cleaner products, um, this continuation of meat first on the label, uh, natural <coughs> ingredients uh, or products that are recognizable uh, to the purchaser, uh, free from maybe ingredients that they don't feel nutritionally uh, adequate for the pet. Functional ingredients, uh, again, building on this uh, humanization, um, adding pieces or adding super uh, superfoods, probiotics or prebiotics for gut health, um, including supplements and or fibers that can uh, be added to the recipe, um, again, to provide some kind of a different function that's more than just a complete and uh, balanced uh, cut food. Protein, where and how can I get more protein into my recipe? Uh, not only uh, proteins from uh, traditional meat and fish animal type species, but also plants and uh, the movement uh, to uh, exploration and research into in insect style proteins um, and algae style proteins. Again, pushing this uh, differentiation um, of the product, but also to have a broader range of proteins to pull from and formulate from. E-commerce, uh, as you know, this uh, continues uh, to be a trend moving forward, especially uh, given the recent past and uh, the convenience demanded uh, by the by the consumer or pet parent. Sustainability, so how are the ingredients for uh, the pet foods produced? Um, how are they being manipulated? Uh, how are they being manufactured? Are they rendered? Are they changed into some different format? What energy uh, is being used and how much? Uh, something that we would call maybe cooked print or uh, food miles. So what, uh, what is the true carbon footprint of manufactured pet food today? Uh, these are some of the, uh, the questions and issues that are becoming uh, relevant in trends. So uh, last but not least, um, how can I get more meat into my product um, and different forms of meat, uh, fresh meat, uh, hydrolyzed meat, meat muscle, um, spray dried meat, um, this has really driven some of the latest innovations um, that we're going to further explain to you here today. So this idea of disruptive innovation 
to increase uh, to increase the meat inclusion uh, has driven us to some of these next levels of processing technology. But before we get into that, um, it's we kind of need to start drawing lines around what is high meat because high meat may mean something different to uh, several people. Um, we try to categorize meat in terms of different levels, and uh, these levels are uh, termed in the form of dry feed rate as a percent. So meat as a percent of the dry feed rate. So here you can see uh, categories one, uh, which would be a 40% uh, inclusion as a percent of the dry feed rate, which uh, has, uh, with, without having some other further processing occur or manipulation of the formula. And to relate that to the label on um, how, uh, if you look in the lower right corner, you can see how that uh, conversion might look on a finished uh, product uh, category. So as a percent of the total um, in, the, uh, in the bowl per se. So uh, moving through category two, up to 70% uh, meat inclusion, category three, up to 110%. So when we say 110%, that's more than a one to one uh, ratio of meat inclusion to dry ingredients. So in other words, uh, fresh meat slurry inclusion uh, to the dry recipe would equate to roughly about 52% uh, on the label or being uh, declared uh, on the package. And now with the latest technology um, here in the thermal screw, we're able to uh, expand, um, which allows you to uh, achieve almost uh, a two times uh, to one dry recipe to meat ratio and what we would call about 200% meat inclusion which would equate to about 67% meat, 67 meat uh, on your label or uh, ingredient de declaration. So um, the process, uh, taking a look at what, uh, what the process might look like and how it relates to the thermal screw uh, extrusion platform, it was built uh, on the high intensity uh, preconditioner and the thermal twin technology, which is really the chassis for, for what this thermal screw was uh, built around. Uh, it utilizes a uh, unique screw, screw profile uh, to allow for internal heating and uh, exchange into the extrudate through a set of screws and shafts uh, that are inside the extruder. It provides uh, an indirect uh, heating of the extrudate, so you're not adding any additional moisture to the, to the process. Uh, in, in terms of 40 kilowatts of energy transfer, which is equivalent to between seven and 10% steam, Again, delivering more energy uh, to the extrudate without raising the moisture, which is uh, typical on high meat or elevated meat uh, applications. The other um, aspect is we lengthen the extruder barrel here to make it a more favorable uh, and flexible uh, cooking profile, uh, giving, uh, again, giving you more flexibility to control uh, specific uh, product characteristics. Um, we also include a unique uh, post extrusion uh, convection roasting and drying process that helps control uh, texture density and uniformity, which are, uh, can be an issue on these high meat uh, style diets. Uh, in addition, we've integrated a process control system assuring uh, that we are meeting food safety standards from a pasteurization and a control of uh, pathogens that may be in uh, some of these meat products. So just a quick tour and I'll finish up here and we'll go to lunch. Um, the, uh, the process allows you the fle flexibility to uh, produce a full range of products all the way from economy style products through conventional, um, various levels of meat inclusion, uh, semi-moist, soft-moist products, uh, long and short-grid type uh, treat products, 
Um, again, complete and balanced, uh, dry and semi-moist uh, pet foods as well. Allows you to achieve up to 200% meat inclusion or 67% uh, as a percent of the total um, in the bowl. Um, all of the meats um, from fresh sources, which can be a uh, marketing tool or an advantage in some cases. Um, no pre-treatment of, uh, of the meat ingredients are required. So meat, no dewatering or hydrolyzing or rendering of the meat ingredients are required. Um, this has proven to... Uh, to give a superior palatability and digestibility, which we'll look at here in the next couple of slides. So in this particular case, this was a research and development project um, that was conducted at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, where chicken meat um, was replacing chicken, chicken meal in a balanced diet. And uh, we looked at total tract to parent digestibility of crude protein uh, between the meal and the meat, and here you can see it was almost a 15% increase in digestibility, whereas the, uh, the energy, energy density uh, in crude uh, considerably almost 2,000 kilocalories per kg in this particular example. Here, as we uh, move across the different categories of meat inclusion, uh, you can see here that the category four here allows you to make up all of your uh, meat protein uh, from a fresh source versus rendered um, uh, poultry milks, for example. And uh, finally here, uh, looking at uh, palatability results on a, uh, a grain-free uh, example, diet processed through the thermal twin extrusion process compared to a single screw extruder and drying. Um, the, Notice the palatability was uh, uh, 2.7 5 to 1 ratio. This was a feeding trial that was done in the United States with these two products, and the first choice preference uh, being 3 to 1. Mm -hmm. So, with that said, um, I don't uh, have anything else to add to it. If you have questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask. We will be uh, at the uh, exhibiting at the uh, show here over the next two days in Hall 7, uh, I believe booth 3. So thank you again, uh, Indian Pet Food you Industry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So hi, my name is Ashita and I just wanted to ask like what could be some good ways where uh, to do thermal heating, the light thermal heating that you were talking about? Yeah, so being able to adjust uh, mechanical and thermal energy uh, is, is kind of one of the big breakthroughs here. So we do that by the amount of steam that's being injected into the process. Um, so if we need uh, a lighter, uh, lighter or more gentle cook, um, we would lower the, uh, the mechanical energy and maybe increase the uh, thermal energy in the process. Thank you. Any other questions? May I please request Dr. Shashank Sinha to please come on stage to felicitate Mr. Curtis? <coughs> A huge round of applause for Mr. Curtis, please. Thank you very much, gentlemen.